Hey Lake Springs Church, Dyke McCord with Waypoint Church Partners. I got to bring the message and hang out with you all just a couple of months ago, and I'm so pleased to see you all rocking it for the Lord. You're doing great. I'm so grateful for our partnership with the Lake Springs family and appreciate the invitation to share how our partnership impacts the kingdom together. We fulfill the great commandment by catalyzing kingdom growth. We do that two ways, by partnering with established churches and planting new churches. Through strategic services, support, and training, our desire is to see an ever-increasing number of thriving churches and church leaders. The healthier the church, the greater the potential, first for a disciple-making movement that transforms your community for Christ, and second is for us to partner together on the next church plant and the next disciple-making movement that transforms the next community for Christ. Jesus described it like a mustard seed. Though small in size, it grows large in impact. I'm so glad we get to do that together. Thank you for your partnership in the kingdom. Good morning, Lake Springs Church. Um, some of you may know me, some of you may not know me. Uh, my name is Garrett Simerson and my wife Jen and our family, uh, we live and work in South Asia and your church is one of our, our mission partner churches. Um, so I wanted to take a minute to send a video and say thank you. We, we praise God for you um, and for the work that you are enabling uh, through your partnership. Uh, and uh, you know, in the past six months, uh, we have seen God do some really cool things. Uh, we have seen um, hundreds of gospel shares. We've seen uh, some uh, some churches planted um, among least reached peoples, and um, and you're a part of that. You guys are mission partners in that. So just wanted to say thank you. And um, yeah, actually, right now, uh, my family and I we're in Chiang Mai, Thailand, uh, getting some some family care. Um, but if you if you look behind me. Um, I'm actually at the famous uh, Wafra Singh Temple, and there's nothing quite like a, a place like this to remind you uh, of both the beauty and the brokenness uh, of the region. And so, in addition to giving thanks uh, for you, uh, I want to call you to prayer. And I want to ask you to pray for the least reached peoples of the region. And I pray the gospel would speed ahead. Um, pray that uh, that disciples would be made, churches planted, until there's no place left. And King Jesus rules over uh, this place as he is worthy to do. So just praising God for you. Thanks so much, Lake Springs Church. Yeah. Amen. Um, so if you were wondering, we are in week uh, four of a series around the vision of Lake Springs Church, and today we get a chance to talk about uh, missions and and how missions works here, and 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 how God is advancing His kingdom all over the world, not just locally uh, in in this congregation, but all over the world through you guys and through your support and and uh, your generosity and all those kinds of things. You know, there are two uh, two great uh, commands that we find in the Scripture. And uh, that, that all believers, that all Christians are supposed to live out. Uh, the first one is the great commandment, to love God and love others, right? And, and so uh, that's something that we're all called to do. If you call yourself a follower of Jesus, that's something you're called to do. Whether you realize it or not, you're called to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And then another great kind of command that we're given in Scripture is the great commission. At the end, as Jesus is leaving his disciples to go into the world, make disciples, of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that Jesus has commanded and everything Jesus has taught. And so um, those are really the, the, the centerpieces behind what the church is and what the kingdom of God is about. It's about loving God and loving others and about making disciples who love God and love others. And so uh, when we are thinking about how to do that as a church, we do that a lot of times on Sunday mornings like this. We have worship services, and then we have life groups, and we have core groups and formation practices, and we do things like that. Um, we, we, we have service opportunities, all of that kind of stuff in the local church community context of how we fulfill the Great Commission, the Great Command, and all of that kind of stuff. But also, uh, every time that you give to our church, we get to take 10% of everything that's given and give it to organizations uh, like the ones represented today um, and give that to um, so that they can expand the kingdom in places that we can't go. Then they can expand the kingdom in places that, that we just won't be able to reach. And so 
um, I'm, I'm super privileged to have this group of people up here today. Um, and, and because of your generosity and because of uh, your, your um, abundance of giving here at our church, which I don't know if you guys really, we don't ever really talk about. Uh, I don't know why, but like God just, just has been really good through this congregation and just blessed us in immense ways. And, um, and we're so, so grateful for you because not only do, have we given 10% away this year, we've given more than 10% away this year to be able to support um, other things that are going on. Yeah, and um, that's just, that's a grace of God that, that um, you know, there's a story, um, and I, I, I don't want to, I'm trying not to preach today, but there's a story in, um, in, in, in the Old Testament where, um, where, where they, the, I, think, I think it's Moses and Aaron, they tell the people to bring their offerings before the Lord, and, uh, and they start having to tell people, stop, 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 you're bringing, we have too much, we have more than enough. But more than enough, and I'm not going to tell you to stop, okay? Uh, but uh, but because we can always find a use for it. But uh, but it's it's just one of those things. God, I feel like that all the time uh, at this church. I'm so grateful for it. But we're going to let these guys in, uh, ladies, introduce themselves to you um, because they they're doing some really awesome stuff in our community and um, and in just you know other other places um, that we aren't necessarily all the time. So. Uh, why don't you guys start over here on this side and, and just kind of share who you are and what you, where, what you, where you serve and that kind of thing. Sure. Hi, everybody. My name is Tyler. This is my wife, Merritt Murray. Um, we're the co-directors of the Care Pantry here at Lake Springs. I'm Brittany. This is my husband, Brian, and we um, run together the Second Home Support Network for foster and adoptive and kinship families. My name is uh, Chuck Thompson. I'm here representing the Carolina Care, excuse me, the Carolina Care Center's ministry team today. My name is Jared Safley, and I am here representing Blessify. But uh, to be quite honest, the real driving force behind yep. Blessify is my beautiful wife, Sohela, who is next door leading the uh, middle school ministry right now. <laughs> yeah, so... Um... So the, all of all of these uh, people up here are, are people who serve and work uh, with organizations that we financially support to bring the kingdom of God uh, here on earth as it is in heaven. And so uh, we're talking today about how these organizations go about fulfilling that great commandment and that great commission. So um, so whoever wants to take this question first, it, it, we're just, I'm going to throw it out there. You guys reel it in like a fish on a lure, okay? But... Uh, <laughs> When, when you look at culture today, you look at the world today, and you see like, what it, like, all that there is to see, because it's a lot, right? Uh, what, uh, what does it look like to love God and love others inside of that context? And how is your, your ministry doing that? How are you guys loving God and loving others uh, through that? Whoever wants to answer, go for it. Um, so as... as my wife, Brittany, mentioned we lead a ministry for foster and adoptive families. <clears throat> and as we, before we even formed this ministry, we're um, an adoptive family. We've been fostering for a number of years. One of the things that we uh, learned early on is that it can be a very lonely life. That, um, and, you know, especially as you're in the foster care world longer, kids that come through your home have um, a lot of trauma and that manifests in different ways. And that translates to getting invited less places or having to cancel last minute a lot of times. And so it can end up being really isolating. And so what we started doing early on, before this even became an organization, is we just wanted to be a place where people could come and bring their kids and not worry about behaviors. And you know, we invite people over and tell them, you can let your kids break whatever you want in the house. And <laughs> it's probably been broken before by our own kids. And, um, and we, so we started doing that and providing meals for people. And we realized that just these little tiny ways of showing love that are really, in the grand scheme of things, really small. Um, made a huge difference. And when people did that kind of thing for us, that made a huge difference in our lives as well. And so as we form this organization, one of our main reasons for forming it is to show that love and support to these families where oftentimes they feel like they're uh, kind of on an island or in this by themselves. And so we do that by, by offering support groups and by offering meals and mentorships to these families that, um, that it, it just kind of a way to show them that, that um, you know, the church is behind them and that the, the body of Christ is behind them, and that even though it may seem like you're on your own a lot of the times, 
you're not. And there's there's a group and a, a network here that's here to support you and show you Christ's love. Our Carolina Care Center, we've got several things under our umbrella, but our heart is to mobilize people to fulfill the Matthew 25 mandate, to the, the mercy ministries. I was hungry and you fed me. I was in prison and you visited me. I was all those things. So we're looking to do that. And through our, through our uh, counseling ministry, it means listening and being there and walking through folks and their, and their pain and anxiety and some rough times of their life. And it means loving them and helping, helping them, giving them tools they need to move forward and be healed. With our care portal, it's about meeting some direct needs, uh, sort of benevolence needs. We were in staff meeting the other day and it comes up on our phone, there's a, there's a need. One of the ladies who is uh, working, uh, who's, our, she even got the message from the Pregnancy Life Care Center that we're working with. And a lady who's there who has two children, she's unmarried, and she's pregnant with her third child, who was thinking about abortion. She comes there, she's decided to keep her child, praise the Lord, but she needs some help. And one of the things she needs is diapers, and that was on the list. So we get to help meet, you know, if you're on that list, you just get to help meet needs right there, go drop it off and doing things like that. Our care pantry, need, pantry needs, as you know, is meeting the physical needs of people. But our prison ministry, it means, uh, first thing it means is we offer dignity and hope and love to some guys who've made some poor choices. Mm. And they're not just for them. We try to be there to help uh, uh, minister with their families and stuff as well, giving them all kinds of support and encouragement and pointing them to Jesus. Mm. Yeah. Amen. yeah, that's good. Good. One of the uh, one of the things that uh, Chuck talked about a little bit in the first service was just how um, you know a lot of times inmates specifically um, their families have needs, especially around holidays and birthdays and things like that. And being involved in these inmates' lives, one of the things they constantly ask for is support to support their family, support their kids at home, support their wives at home, um, and and those kinds of things. So you get a chance to really do that. Um, and pray for them, but also, you know, meet some of their uh, physical needs as well. Um, Jared, you look like you were going to say something. Yeah, I mean, I, mean I, I mentioned this in the first service, but when I came up, I um, met Brian and his wife, and they spoke about, you know, foster families, and then um, Chuck mentioned about, you know, um, meeting the need of a, of a mom with an unplanned pregnancy, and I thought, wow, this is, I'm definitely supposed to go third, because... Me and my wife are in the midst of adopting, um, fostering to adopt a little boy, Colton. He's here today with us uh, over in the middle school. Yeah. And um, so we're super excited about that. And um, Brian had actually reached out to me about a month or so ago through another connection, Derek and another pastor that I know. And, uh, but I have not had a chance to meet him personally until today. And then um, one of the things that Blessify is currently doing a program we're running, uh, we call it Blessify for Life, is a campaign to provide a scholarship or partial scholarship, potentially full scholarship, to a mom who has chosen to give life um, with an unplanned pregnancy. So um, Chuck mentioning what they had done, I was like, wow, I'm definitely one, two, three, this flows right in. But as far as the, the, the culture and everything, I think, um, you know, I think if you look at culture today and society as a whole, it's easy to think like, wow, what a mess, you know, and it, and it really is a mess. I mean, but if you step back from that and look at it from a historical perspective, I feel like it's society has always been a mess, right? Because um, the world is full of broken people, as we are all broken to some degree, and with that brokenness comes mess. As a Christian, I think, you know, the challenge for me at times is um, looking at that and, and weighing what a lot of people talk about doing, which is kind of hunkering down and just um, doing your own thing, staying in your own lane. Um, but as a Christian, I have to try to look at what Jesus, you know, when he lived in this messy world, what he did. And I don't see Jesus taking that approach. I see Jesus taking the exact opposite approach jumping into the mess, getting close to those who are broken and all the mess that they have with them, and then ministering to those in various ways. So that's what we try to do at Blessify. We try to come alongside folks in sometimes small ways, sometimes a little bit larger ways, one of which is, you know, through simple, um, when they reach our website, uh, they'll send in prayer requests, uh, oftentimes about families and support. Sometimes it's with us giving out some of our $20 gift cards that we carry with us to Walmart or Food Lion. Um, they can maybe get some food for their family or maybe a need for their, for their kids. Sometimes it's bigger things like providing a, a meal to a community, um, like we did by partnering with Lake Springs back at Thanksgiving last year. We fed an entire community, local community here, with the Thanksgiving meal. We also provided over uh, 100 kids with Christmas gifts uh, who otherwise probably would not have gotten Christmas. And then, um, you know, again, the, the thing we're doing now with the Moms for Life. So we just try to be Jesus to those around us that he puts in our path. Yeah, that's awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, give God praise for that for sure. 
Um, Merritt, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you guys are doing? So, so uh, just to be clear, uh, when Tyler and Merritt introduce themselves, what they do is they they actually they they attend here, and their primarily uh, way of serving the the church is through running. Um, uh, the care pantry for our church once a month. And so if you've never met them, they're here almost every week. Uh, I won't say every week because they probably have vacation too. Uh, but, uh, but almost every week they're here and they're, and they're here serving every, every month uh, with the care pantry. So maybe just talk about how that, that's going and, and what you guys are doing in that regard. Sure, absolutely. So um, we stepped in um, to be directors of the care pantry back in the beginning of November. Um, and as from what I've heard, the care pantry used to be open here back when we were Point Church, and it was incredibly successful. Lots of people came, received food. It was fantastic. Um, so we reopened that um, in October, November, and we are working to ramp things back up to what it used to be, um, and we are somewhat of an extension of the Carolina Care Center. We are partnered with them. They are kind of the, um, the resource that we use to get the food that we receive from TFAP, which is the Emergency Food Assistance Program. Um, so we receive food from the North Carolina Food Bank, um, and then we use that food to distribute to the community here in Holly Springs. Um, but the, uh, the, the care pantry, there's a reason that it's called the care pantry and not the food pantry. Um, and that's because although we are primarily focused on distributing food right now, um, there's a lot more that we could do. And our, our, our focus just is, you know, finding a care that is needed um, and filling that need. So that could be providing clothes to someone who needs clothes. It could be partnering with foster families and providing meals for them or just fellowship or, you know, whatever whatever needs that they might have. Or it could look like partnering with a, a pregnancy center and filling needs of expectant mothers um, or anything like that. So there's a lot that we can do with the care pantry, and we're excited to see um, what the future holds. Uh, but right now we are primarily focused on that food distribution and working on spreading the awareness that we are back open um, and that we have the, the event once a month here at the church. Yeah, so uh, speak just a little bit. When are you guys here yep. passing out food and, and that sort of thing? So our event is the third Saturday of every month. It is from 11 to 12, open to the public. Anybody who needs food can come and get it. Um, I'll talk more about this uh, a little bit later, but we, our attendance levels are low right now. Um, and so we don't necessarily need a ton of volunteers from the church. Um, there's not much to do, I'll be <laughs> honest. Um, our, our attendance just really needs to increase before we ask for like a ton of you guys to show up. Um, Feel free to come if you're okay with just standing around. That's cool too. <laughs> um, but that's what it looks like right now. And so spreading awareness is like the biggest thing that you could do for us right now. If you know somebody in need, absolutely let them know that we're here the third Saturday every month, 11 to 12. Yeah, third Saturday every month, 11 to 12, right here at the church. And uh, it's a great opportunity to connect someone that you might know that's in need. Maybe you have children who are in a local school and, and you, have an op you have a relationship with an administrator or something like that. Uh, feel free to, you know, contact them. There are, there are plenty of people in our community that if they knew uh, that we were here, that they would, they would uh, be in need and we could meet those needs. So uh, help us uh, by getting that word out. Um, all right. So when we talk about that, so that, that's kind of ways in which we love God, right, and love others. And, um, and we really try and fulfill that great commandment as to, like, really almost meet people's physical needs um, in order that we can meet their spiritual needs and make turn them into like disciples and, and help make disciples out of uh, these organizations. So um, maybe explain uh, some of that to, to us today. Like how is your organization helping create and make students, teaching them uh, of Jesus, making them um, aware of Jesus um, and who he is and what he's about and um, and how, how is your organization doing that in a way that's 
um, really, you know, making and building disciples? I can go again. <laughs> um, so it's not just us that are there on, on Saturdays. We do have a great group of about six volunteers. I see some of you guys out here um, <laughs> who have been with us pretty much since the beginning. They've been um, helping us spread the word. They're there with us every month. Um, and we found that that's a great number for us. We all feel like we are contributing every month, but um, we don't have an excess of, of people who are just kind of standing around. Um, but uh, we something that's really special for us is that we get that one-on-one -on -one interaction with the people that we're able to help. Um, they're there getting the food from us, and so we get to speak to them individually. We get to um, receive their contact information. We get their email, um, and we're able to communicate with them if we need to. They're also able to communicate with us. We do have a care pantry email. It's carepantry at lakespringschurch.com. <laughs> so if you guys ever need to talk to us, you can email us. Um, or if you know anyone who's in need, you can give them that email. Um, but we get that special opportunity to talk directly to those in need. Um, and then our volunteers are amazing. You guys are just really on fire for God. And they, um, they get the opportunity to ask for uh, prayer requests. They can invite them to the church service that happens the very next day um, right here on the same campus. So the, uh, the people know exactly where to come. Um, and then uh, they can even pray over them if the, if the person is comfortable with that. So that's just really unique for us to be able to have that um, in person right then and there time to, uh, to fellowship with, with yeah. those people. Yeah, I talked about this a little bit last week when we talked about hospitality, but the idea that you would, you would be able to disciple someone outside of a relationship with someone is impossible. Um, and so, like, if you think about your life, you think about uh, where you have been most shaped and most formed into becoming a disciple, it, it stems from a relationship or close relationships that you've had um, in your life of people who have walked alongside of you. And this is where the care pantry really gets an opportunity to connect with individuals and, and really hopefully build a relationship that will hopefully lead to discipleship. So that's really the hope, right? Is that, um, that, 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 that kind of transition happens, but it's got to start with that relationship. So, uh, grateful for you guys being there to, to pour into those people and love on them and start that relationship. So, uh, Brittany, you look like you're ready to, to jump in. So let's, let's hear it. Yeah, we do a, a multiple different areas and way we disciple, but I think one of the main things we focus on um, is getting our parents trauma trained and supported and on mission for what foster care and adoption is. We talk a lot about reunification and open adoption and going beyond just the kids, but reaching the families. Um, we talk a lot in our ministry about changing generational cycles. Oftentimes, our kids that are coming into our home their parents were in foster care, their grandparents were in foster care. And so we just have a huge heart to not only pour into these kids, but pour into these families. I shared in first service, um, we have a foster daughter who is 11 months old. You may have saw me carrying her outside. Um, we've had her since she was born, basically. But she's never met her parents. Her dad was in prison her whole life. Um, got out recently, about two weeks ago. Um, and on paper... He's not someone that you would want to invite into your home. <laughs> um, he just, he has a past. He was a foster kid himself. He was in prison for a valid reason. Um, mo most people would be scared to invite this man into their home. Um, but we talk about what does it look like to open this relationship? So we invited him to church and then took him out to McDonald's afterwards for him to meet his daughter and just talk with him. We heard his story. Um, and yeah, talking about relationships, when you hear people's stories, it changes everything. It's maybe I would be where you are. It also is sharing with them that no one's too far gone. Mm. You may have experienced all this in your life, but, you know, sharing there's a God who loves you and you are worth being redeemed. Mm. Um, and so that is really our heart of discipleship is just breaking these generational cycles, reaching the kids, reaching their families so that we can have permanency for the kids. There are 400,000 kids in foster care in the U.S., and we would love to get that number down, <laughs> the kids not in foster care, by just reaching the families, breaking the generational cycles. Mm, that's great. Good stuff. Yeah.
in our care center ministries, we do want to love people well, and that does include pointing them to Jesus Christ. So we're, we're doing stuff in the care center, doing stuff in the, uh, the care portal. We want to meet their physical needs, but we want to point them to Jesus and offer to share the gospel, pray with them every chance we get. And I want to say, too, uh, we're not only about getting people involved in the game and life-giving ministry. We want to uh, allow you to be a part of this. And uh, I guess as far as I didn't get to mention the first service, in our counseling ministry, when you're going through some rough stuff or if you've got friends struggling with depression, anxiety, or whatever, we certainly want to, that's a resource that, we, that is available for you as well. And certainly want to encourage you to take a part of that, become a part of that. In our prison ministry, we just roll our sleeves up and get straight with the guys. The guys have, uh, the guys have uh, made some terrible choices. They come in there deer in the headlights, and uh, Satan wants them to rot. But if they've got breath, uh, God's got purpose for them. And so we've seen God do some incredible things. We saw, uh, saw 44 sisters, uh, we got 44 new sisters at our Easter worship service. They stood and prayed to receive Christ. That was an incredible day. Last uh, Thursday, we were at Central Prison, and the, uh, during our general population service, five guys surrendered their lives to Jesus Christ. It was just a wonderful time. <clears throat> and as far as discipling those guys, uh, again, we shoot straight with the gospel and undo a lot of the, the, the stuff that's uh, Kuchberger theology, the way I look at it. Anyway, just the, the crazy ideas that stuff has and get them straight, and we look to give them mission. Uh, by this Wednesday this week, they'll, have, they'll receive my first letter. By the week after, they'll receive a book from me. And we encourage these guys to not only become part of a Bible study, but to grow as leaders in Bible studies. Our prayer, our mission for the guys at Central Prison is that God would make Central Prison a disciple-making and disciple-sending station. When those guys come into Central, a lot of them are coming in at maximum security, and then they're, and, uh, they'll be there for two years, three years, then they're uh, work, work their way down to medium security, and then they're scattered across the state. So we want to see God do some incredible things, so we look to build those guys up, build them up as leaders, and right now we've got guys that were with us in Central Prison that are leading Bible studies in 17 different facilities across the state. So God's doing some pretty cool stuff. And but our ministry, too, is, again, is not just uh, to the guys that are incarcerated, the women who are incarcerated. We want to help uh, minister to the families on the outside. And there are several organizations that we work with to do that, uh, from Angel Tree to other things, because the, there's the number one prayer concern that the guys write down in their Connect cards each week, pray for my family and stuff. So there are a lot of ways to be involved in that. That's, uh, yeah, I, don't, I, I think that that's one of the most, like, amazing uh, ideas of discipleship. We talk about disciples who make disciples who make disciples. Like that, that like we have to be a, a group of people who multiply disciples. And to think that there were 17 guys who started at Central Prison who maybe didn't even know Jesus or know that Jesus loved them. They got over that hump, then fell so in love with Jesus that they, when they left Central Prison, they started other Bible studies in other prisons. Uh, I mean, that's just, that's an incredible, incredible thing. I mean, that's like, you know, uh, these guys are, these guys are doing great work in ministry. So thank you, Chuck. And uh, that's, that's really great stuff. Uh, Jared, what do you got? Yeah, for us with the discipleship part, um, it really starts with my wife and I as uh, the adult leaders of Blessify. <laughs> I say the adult leaders because our two girls uh, Sydney and Whitney are the president and vice president of Blessify. <laughs> My wife and I just have the small roles of treasurer and secretary. Um, but as the, but as part of that, you know, our, we really feel that Blessify, our role is to use Blessify to teach biblical principles to our kids. And that's really how Blessify got started. You know, shout out to the care pantry, because really what Blessify was born out of was a family that we met serving at the Cary Point Church Network. Um, my wife and I just really both been praying about God bring us a family that we can we can impact locally and we met a family there a single mom of five kids um, all the kids were at the time under the age of 10 and she was just in um, a really bad situation and so we met her that that Saturday um, I carried her groceries out to her car prayed for her and walked back in and unbeknownst to me my wife had found her kids and was sitting with this lady and hanging out and when when we left that we, we, we think we found our family and we basically then took them on as an adopted family for the next couple of years until they moved um, last year to Maryland but I say all that is because really like our ministry and, and our discipleship starts with our two soon to be three kids at home and what's come out of that has been you know just a couple of quick examples I shared in the first the first um, service was you know our kids are like probably a lot of your kids um they're pretty blessed they don't they don't go around needing a whole lot of things um we're fortunate and and 
you know, God's blessed our family to be able to be a blessing to others. And so um, my girls play volleyball and they were coming home one, from one game with their mom and uh, they had lost, they'd played terrible. And my wife was really focused on the outcome of the game and talking to Sydney about that. And all of a sudden Sydney breaks out and says, hey mom, I, I think there's a homeless person right back there that we just passed. And so Hela had a lot going on that day and she was really focused on getting home and diving in onto that. And Sydney was just really insistent about turning around. So they did, they turned around and went back and and sure enough, there was a man there that they met, and his name is Earl. And um, they talked to Earl for a few minutes, and Earl filled out a prayer card, and we gave Earl a, a $20 gift card, and we got to know him. And a couple of weeks later, we're driving through town again, and Sydney looks over and says, hey, I think that's Earl over there. Sure enough, it was Earl walking down the street. Mm -hmm. So we stopped, talked to Earl again, and through that, we really got to know Earl. And what that led to was, you know, this past winter, Earl was sleeping on the streets a lot. Um, a local uh, garage had allowed him to sleep in an abandoned car that they had on their property there. And so we would, we would meet Earl. We would uh, bring him food sometimes. Or he would call. We'd provide him blankets. And just, just were there to listen to him. I took him and was in the drive through with him for like 20 minutes one day, you know, just <laughs> listening to Earl. And so um, our girls are learning what it's like to love God well and to you love their community and their neighbors well. And, mm. you know, right now they're, you know, like I mentioned, my wife is next door. So if you have middle school kids, your kids are next door with my wife and, and mm -hmm. my gr two girls and soon to be um, adopted son. And they're making Blessify bags for the less fortunate in our community. Um, they'll, they'll fill those bags with some simple needs and things and some food and they'll get a gift card. And um, so your kids are gonna come home with a bag that we want them to look for people in their local community to hand those out to and supply them and just be the hands and feet of Jesus. So really just, just looking to teach the next generation about what it looks like to love God and love their neighbors well. I love that. I love the fact that, yeah, it's awesome. Um, I love the fact that Jared and uh, Sohela, their two girls and soon to be uh, son Colton um, is, uh, is so committed to that that they're trying to even disciple our children. I, I think that that's so great, and we should be so grateful for them and uh, and and just the work that they're doing. Um, all right, so you get an opportunity to kind of share with us a little bit, guys, on how we can further help, uh, be be helpful to what it is that you guys have going on. So uh, how can Lake Springs? How can all of us here today? How can we help you further the kingdom of God here on earth as it is in heaven? What can we do? Um, so we first off, we just want to say thanks. Like the 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 support that we've already received from from Lake Springs has been really incredible. Uh, but if if you do want to get involved with us, there are three ways you can do it. And one of the ways is going to be the same for all of us, and that's through prayer. Um, we all need prayer personally. The the people we serve need prayer. There's no shortage of prayer needs with the with all the people that are being served up here. Um, so I would, I would encourage you if if that's something that you want to partner with this in is prayer is to actually go up to one of these organizations afterwards and, and ask how we can pray, not just the idea of prayer, but specifically what are the prayer needs. For us, we have a, we have a team, a prayer team where you can sign up for where we'll send you specific prayer needs and things like that. And I think some of the others have something similar. Um, but you can partner with us through prayer. The second way you can partner with us is, is financially. We are right now in a position where we're, we're getting ready for a really large back to school drive that we're doing in July for uh, any foster and adoptive kids in the Triangle area. And right now, a lot of it is being su uh, supplied by churches, including Lake Springs, which we'll talk about in a second. But that, that is not provided by churches, it's provided by uh, our organization or us personally. And so financial partnership, we've, what, regardless of the amount, is extremely helpful. And then the third way is Lake Springs has agreed to do a backpack drive for that event. Um, and so that, the, the kind of specifics of when that'll be will be communicated later, but if you wanna be involved in that, Come, we have a table set up, come sign up for it, and we can communicate some of that info there. And one thing I want to encourage you with, as Brittany mentioned earlier, there's, there's this thing in foster care called the, uh, the generational foster care cycle where kid, people are in foster care, their kids are in foster care, their grandkids end up being in foster care, and it's just this generational cycle that's really hard to break. And what we found is if families can keep their homes open a little bit longer, they're much more likely to break that cycle. And so these little acts of support, whether it's buying a backpack or signing up to, to provide a meal to, to a family, even though that may seem like a really small piece or that may seem like something that it's not really gonna make that huge of a difference, those little things can be the difference between someone keeping their home open or someone closing it. 
Mm. And someone keeping their home open could literally break that cycle for <clears throat> generations and generations and generations to come. Mm. So I wanna encourage you, if you decide to partner with us, regardless of what that looks like, any, any sort of partnership is extremely helpful to our families and extremely mm. appreciated. Yeah, yeah. amen. Uh, yeah, so uh, really cool um, thing that, that we've been talking about is we, we did a yard sale yesterday as a church, and, um, and so we told you guys we're going to give that money away to missions. 100% of everything that we raise at the yard sale, we're going to give that away to missions. And so uh, during our first service, we were able to present uh, Brian and Brittany with a check for their uh, organization for $2,500. So, uh, yeah, praise God. Thank you. Uh, thank you guys for the, thank you guys for just the generous donations that you guys brought forth so that we could give that money to them so they can truly love on families who need it, um, and, and fulfill what the Bible says, um, about loving orphans. I mean, I just love, uh, I love the fact that, that we're able to do that. So, uh, thank you guys for that. I appreciate it. Uh, and I know they appreciate it as well. Yeah. If you don't mind, one of the things that was really cool about that is, we had no idea it was happening. Um, and so it was a, it was a really, it, it blew us away for service when, when that was presented. We had no idea. And th this is like, it's very easy as a church just to preach the gospel and then ignore the rest. And that is clearly not what happens at Lake Springs. So we, just, we really want to say thank you to you guys. Thank you. Um, all right, Mer why don't you tell us how we can be uh, supporting and continue to support the, the care pantry? Yeah. So, um, of course, I said uh, spreading awareness is something that will help us a lot right now. Um, and due to our low attendance rates, um, we have a lot of food back there. So that's another reason why we haven't been asking you guys for donations. Um, and some of that food is actually set to expire over the next few months. So um, we have been trying to think of ways to involve the entire church. We don't want this mission to just be the eight of us who have been doing it for the past few months. Um, and so we sat down with Derek and we were brainstorming ideas um, and ways for everyone to be involved. And um, we came up with the idea of packing some bags with some of the food that is soon to expire, that will expire if it just sits there on the shelves waiting for people to come to us. Um, and we want to send those bags with you guys um, and go out into the community to deliver those bags. So um, we will be outside um, after the service with those bags. Please come and see us and grab a bag. Um, and we just challenge you guys to um, give the bag to someone in need. So that might look like giving it to someone that you see at a stop sign who's asking for help or passing someone on your walk into work. Or maybe you already know someone who is in need of a little extra food um, and you can just give that to them and, um, and spread, spread some love. So um, we just, we challenge you to open your eyes and see the need in the community. Um, and we're hoping that giving you guys these bags will, will help you do that. So come and see us after the service um, to grab a bag. I will say the, the first service kind of wiped us out. So <laughs> we're a little low, but, yeah. um, but we yeah. will have some bags on there for you yeah. guys. So, so come and see. Yeah, us. go grab a bag, put it in your car, take it with you when you pass someone, wherever you go. Um, and you're like, oh, this is a great time. I can give this bag away. So um, just be attentive to the opportunities that are laid out in front of you that God gives you, all right? Um, Chuck, what about, what about you guys? You guys got anything? Well, on behalf of Jay Cook, our counseling pastor, and, and, and Rob Maddox, our director, we just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. It is a joy to partner with you and be involved in these life-gifting ministries. And it is our desire, if we can help you in any way to be a resource, we want to do that. It is our joy to serve together. And, uh, and we learn from each other. We've got a few things. We've got some ideas about a few things, but we're learning all the time. And, we're, again, we just want to help you in any and every way we can. Out on the table and outside the doors there, we got five different pamphlets about different things, so please pick up something or contact Derek. We'll be glad to get in touch with you and help you in any and every way we can. Yeah. But we're just, we, we just, it lights us up to be a part of these life-giving ministries, so we yeah. want to do it with you. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's great. Go, yeah, there are some tables set up. You'll see a couple over here. Uh, Brittany and Brian both have a table over there. Um, I'll, I'll speak about this table over here in a minute, and then the care uh, care center has a uh, table out in the lobby. Uh, so 
uh, go visit these these folks before you leave here today. Um, I know Jared and Sohela, they're a part of our church, and so uh, and a major part of our church. So grateful for them. They're in my life group. They they pour into me probably as much or more than I pour into them. So uh, grateful for them and um, and. And there will always be opportunities, I think, to be involved with Blessify, uh, whether that's like what we did last year with Thanksgiving or, uh, or whatever the case might be. So we always keep you guys up to date on how uh, Blessify uh, is able. But if you want to know specifically if there's any initiatives going on, I'm just, because of time, I'm going to ask you guys to just go see Jared and Sohela on your own since you should see them pretty much weekly uh, if you're here. So, uh, so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to um, ask, uh, ask for that because we need to, we need to kind of wrap up here. But um, thank you. Can, you. can we just show these guys some more appreciation for you being here today and sharing? Um, really, really grateful for the work that they're doing. Grateful for your guys' support to make this work possible. Um, I'm going to pray uh, for them and pray for our church and then uh, we'll head on to the next thing. All right, let's pray. God, we thank you just for, um, thank you for, for just everyone that's represented up here on stage today. God, we thank you for their organizations and the work that they're doing their, uh, the call that you've put on their life, um, to, to shine light into the darkness, uh, to, to, to share your love and your grace and your mercy with those that they meet and come in contact with, that most of us, if we're honest, ignore, pass by, take for granted, are afraid to go to. God, these people up here are, they're warriors for your kingdom. And every day, they have to, they have to put on the armor of God to be able to fight against the the spiritual forces of darkness that want to take over our world uh, because that's where they work and that's where they live. They are, they are there in the trenches. And so, God, we just pray for their, uh, we just pray for their provision. We pray for their continued strength and uh, to be encouraged and led forward, uh, continuing to build your kingdom and, uh, and, and pointing more people uh, toward a life-giving relationship with Jesus Christ. Um, God, we uh, thank you so much for our church. We thank you that we get to be a part of such a great place like Lake Springs. And, um, and God, that it is, it is being built not on um, any one person, uh, but it's being built on the hope that comes in the gospel um, and through um, just the hearts and lives of, of everyone here. And so, God, thank you for this congregation, and uh, we praise you, and thank you in Jesus' name, amen. If you will, turn your attentions to the screen uh, for another video. South Asia, home to a quarter of the world's population, 1.9 billion people. Many of these people live in gripping darkness. They have not been shown the love of Christ. Because of the traditional belief systems, the poor are marginalized and separated from opportunities, leading to great physical, emotional, and spiritual need. At Central India Christian Mission, we believe that God has called us to transform these communities in South Asia by creating light through real, radical gospel change. CICM, by the power of the Holy Spirit, is altering the very DNA of this land for the better by sharing the message of Jesus Christ and fulfilling his commandments to love our neighbors as ourselves. That is why we, despite the risk of persecution, courageously work every day to reach the unreached, love the unloved, and bring freedom to those held in captivity. We live by Jesus' example, preaching the good news and serving the people that we meet through our ministry pillars of launching leaders, empowering youth, transforming communities. 
God is igniting the fire of his kingdom message through our indigenously led ministries. And with the support of our global partners, we have planted more than 3,000 churches and over half a million brothers and sisters now have vision to see his goodness. The Lord is at work. We have seen it every day of our 30 years engaged in this work in the smiles of the community, in moments of prayer and worship, and in the restoration he is bringing to this land. We would love to invite you to be a part of what God is doing. Pray for our ministry. Pray for the church. Pray that the light of Christ is known and all of the darkness is lifted. All right, so um, one of the organizations that wasn't able to be here today was Central India Christian Mission. And uh, I don't know if you heard that statistic, but half a million people over the last 30 years have given their life to Jesus and become a part of the church in India because of their work. That's incredible. 3,000 churches have been planted. That's incredible. And um, yeah, I mean, that's just, that's, that's great. I mean, that's more people than live anywhere close to this area right like I mean our town doesn't even come close to that number of people and they've reached half a million people that's incredible stuff that we get a chance to be a part of and you get a chance to be a part of and so just want to say uh, and invite you honestly to to be a part of that in even a bigger way so uh, we have been speaking with the people at Central Indian Christian Mission and uh, February 16th through the 25th of 2024, we want to take a team over to India. And I want to invite you to come uh, on that trip with me and some other folks um, to, to see the work that's being done over there and be a part of the work that's being done over there. Um, they sent me like an itinerary, like a, a potential itinerary of what those 10 days could look like. And I don't think that you could go over there and come back not absolutely changed. And so I just want to invite you. It, it, you, don't, you don't have to say yes today, but what we would love for you to do is just make your way over to their table and sign up for an interest meeting. Um, we're going to have a couple interest meetings coming up where we'll talk about like what does the schedule look like for the 10 days and how much does it cost and, and all of those kinds of things. What will you be doing when you're there? And we just want to invite you to, to come over and if you're interested, at least come check out that meeting and make a decision after that meeting on if it's something that you can do or not. And here's the thing that I will just go ahead and throw out there. If you are like, well, financially, like to take a trip like that, it's going to be expensive and I just don't think I'm going to be able to make that happen no matter what like let us help let's figure out a way all right I don't want anything to keep anyone from going over there and doing something you feel like God's leading you to do um, and if finances is a is an issue and that would keep you from going then please let us help um, we, we want to make it possible for you to do the things God's leading you to. And, and um, if God can change your life and someone else's life by you taking 10 days to go to India, we'll figure out a way to pay for it, right? So, um, so just uh, come if you're interested, and, uh, and, and I'll be over there after service uh, to, uh, to kind of uh, help however I can. But uh, one other thing is Waypoint Church Partners, who wasn't able to be here, but you saw Dyke on that video, um, they are, uh, they're about church planting. They're, they're a church planting organization, a church support organization. And so they came alongside of us a year ago and started supporting Lake Springs and uh, offering us some help and, and helping us work through some things as elders and as leaders that we needed to figure out um, as a church. And so uh, it's great uh, help and support, uh, and we support them uh, because they support us. And, uh, and we see that as a really valuable partnership. But one of the things that they do is they plant churches all over the mid-Atlantic uh, region of the United States all the time. And in this fall, there's going to be a new church that's going to be started in Durham for people who don't know Jesus 
uh, that they might come to know Jesus. And in August, before they start, they're going to throw a weekend carnival where they're going to invite people from their community to come check out uh, this church. And, and so we want to be able to send some volunteers over. So maybe you can't go to India, but I bet you could probably go to Durham on a Saturday and hang out and watch some like kids jump on inflatables or something. And, uh, and so if, if that's something you want to do, there's also a sign up for that over there at the Central India table. Um, uh, but, but please, um, take a next step. There are things that you can do to be further involved and continue to be on mission with these organizations and, uh, and share the love of Christ. All right. So, um, and that's why we're here. I mean, ultimately that's why we're here. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the love of God. Uh, we, and, and the love of God for us, we come back to this moment every week in our service where we remember the love of God by taking communion. Where we look at the broken body of Jesus and the shed blood of Jesus and we remember that that is the hope that we have. That the only reason we have hope and the only reason why we um, can, can uh, like have a story to tell or a testimony to bring is because Jesus has come into the dark places of our life and set us free. And we were never too far gone for him to come and find us and reach us and save us. And so... Uh, we just want to not forget about that. We always want to remember that. That this is the hope that we have and this is why we do what we do. Serve the way we serve. Support the things we support. It's because he loved us and he died for us. And so this morning as you take communion, just pray that you remember that. That hope that you have. Let's pray and then we'll take communion. God, thank you for today. And thank you for just the, the reminder of the hope that is found in your in your grace the hope that is extending into the places around the corner and around the world right now God that we are we are a small piece of the global church and kingdom that is winning souls for Christ and so God I just pray you use us well and that the way in which we will most and best be used is by keeping your grace and mercy in view. That we will never forget that it is your body and your blood shed that give us hope and give us life. So God, we thank you for this time to remember that now. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.